Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Yesterday I uploaded a video titled how I built and bought my house with no preparation and the video got a little lengthy so I had to break it up into two parts so this is part two. So if you haven't watched part one already go back and watch that first and then come back to this. I'm going to literally pick up where I left off so enjoy. One day I woke up. I went on there and I applied. Now, mind you, the Holy Spirit woke me up and told me to apply. I hadn't saved any money. I hadn't done anything towards purchasing a new home. So I just got on there and I applied just right then. Mind you, Jeremy Steele is the only one with the income and I'm at home with two children. So we got approved and we got approved for $290,000 which normally I would have been excited about because the first time around, we only got approved for 150,000. So it kind of seems like God gave us a little bit more this time around. So I was grateful and appreciative, but I knew 290 was probably not gonna get us what we wanted or was looking for. So I still went forth with it. I got a realtor and she started showing us properties and houses and neighborhoods and lots and all kinds of stuff and none of them were looking the part like our townhouse that we paid a hundred and fifty thousand dollars for was way better than the properties we were seeing at 290 because mind you this is years later so what we got back then for the price we pay is unheard of at this point because it's like five years later and the market has changed drastically so yeah 290 is basically like having 150 all over again <laughs> if you want to be honest so we're going around we're looking and i'm trying not to get discouraged because i'm like well maybe i didn't hear god maybe that wasn't him maybe this was a mistake you know what i'm saying because we're not really seeing anything then one day like not even a week later after like viewing all these opportunities the lender she emailed me and was like, hey, I was just sitting here going over your paperwork and I think we're gonna increase the amount that you qualify for. Now, I knew we only qualified for the 290 because we only had the one income, right? And I hadn't asked her to relook at anything. I haven't sent an additional documentation, none of that, because I was already just grateful for, for qualifying for the little bit that we qualified for. And so she was like, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and boost it up to about 350. So she went from 290 to 350 in less than a week without me doing anything at all. So now we were starting to look at different properties. <laughs> and it literally went from like night to day, but they weren't that much better. So then I was like, you know what? We should build, okay? Another step of faith. Because girl, what? You barely can get in a house and you wanna build? What does that even entail? What does that look like? What does that consist of? How do you like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so um, I ended up seeing a lot that was available like literally down the street, right? And we called and she said that in order to reserved a lot she would need a five thousand dollar down payment and so i don't know if you guys know but when you build a house you have to buy the land that you're going to build it on first so that's kind of scary because what if i buy the land and then like something falls through with the house you know what i mean like i don't know i had so many questions going into it but you have to buy the land first so that's where that five thousand dollars down payment came is like to reserve that lot of land that you're going to be building on so that she needed that almost immediately she said that the lots were selling like hot cakes and it's a new neighborhood with 50 brand new houses it's a neighborhood that did not exist before and it was going to be a completely new community and i went on their little blueprint map and i chose the biggest lot in the neighborhood as you can see right here lot number 40 which is the lot that we chose it cost the most the five thousand dollars was just a down payment but the total cost was the twelve thousand and some odd dollars that you see on the screen and that also was an indication that it was probably the biggest as well because it did cost so much more than the others
I remember the reason why we wanted to leave our townhouse is because we wanted more yard. So I figured a bigger lot equal more yard. So I'm like, $5,000? Where am I going to get $5,000 from? I didn't have $5,000 saved up. But guess what? My husband was able to borrow it from his pension, which is cool. Borrowing is fine because he pays it back in his paycheck so all that's going to go back into his retirement plan but that was just really really cool that that money was readily available right there and they overnighted the check and we were able to give it to him just like that that wasn't anybody but god because so during and throughout this entire process my husband and i are fasting and praying for the first three days of every single month and we made that a routine so whenever we fasted and we prayed we always wrote down our requests and our expectations. One thing that you guys need to know about fasting mixed with prayer is that fasting is like dynamite to your prayer. It catapults it to the 10th power. So prayer works, but fasting really works. <laughs> it's like I don't even, I can't even explain it, but it's like if you ask for $5 when you pray, but then you couple fasting with it, the prayer would have gotten you like maybe $10, but fasting will get you 500 okay? Put it that way. Now, obviously, it's not about money, but I wanted to use that as an example because there's so many people in the world who are super fascinated with money. They're always chasing a bag and like I have never been like that and I feel like that's the reason why I'm so blessed right now. I really believe God in his Philippians 4 and 19 promise when he says that he's going to provide all of my needs and that's what he's been doing. My, my husband's job is not our provider. It's God. We give him all the glory, the honor, and the praise, okay? If he leave that job today, guess what? We're still going to be provided for through a different source through a different vessel. You see what I'm saying? You see how that works? So I'm never going to chase a bag because I know that the promises of God are yea and amen, okay? So we were fasting and I have the notes for that and I'm actually going to put them up on the screen so you guys can see the real notes. That I All right, go ahead and get out your pen and paper. So one thing that you want to do is always put God in remembrance of what he said. How are you going to know what he said if you don't read the word of God? That's the problem. The, the Bible is literally a user manual for life. Like how your car has a user manual and appliances. That's what the Bible is. It's how you get through life. So if you don't read it, you're kind of like blindly poking around in the dark. It's literally a manual and it goes step by step and it tells you exactly what to do, how to do it, when to do it, why to do it. So that's what it is. So you have to put God in remembrance of what he said in the Bible because God is a God that cannot lie. He cannot lie. Simply put, in 1 Samuel 15 and 29, it says, Also, the glory of Israel will not lie or change his mind, for he is not a man that he should change his mind. Numbers 23 and 19 says, God is not a man that he should, not, that he should lie. So God cannot lie. And so when you put him in remembrance of what he said, he has no choice but to fulfill his promise that he made. So when we were fasting and praying, I started out with three scriptures, putting him in remembrance of what he said. You know, basically setting the tone and be like, well, you said, and I'm just going by what you said. I'm just standing on your word because I trust you. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to read the three scriptures that I put at the top of the notes. And the first one is Habakkuk 2 and 2. It says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run that readeth it. Okay, so I'm telling God right there, you told me that I need to write the vision and make it plain. I need to write it down in pencil and paper. That's one thing that he requires you to do. It's not like a super requirement, but... If you want what you want to come true, then you will follow those instructions. So I, so that's why I wrote that scripture because I'm letting him know I'm following your orders. I'm following your instructions and I'm about to write all this down. So the next scripture is Philippians 4 and 6. And it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition 
with thanksgiving present your request to God. And so I am praying, I'm petitioning him. And I also had thanksgiving in my heart when I presented my request to him. So it literally says, do not be anxious about anything. That's number one. That's the first part of the scripture. But in every single situation, you need to pray about it. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving in your heart, then you go to God and you present your request to him. Now, let's look up what petition means. Petition is a formal written request, okay? So clearly, he wants you to pray. He wants you to write it down. He wants you to have thanksgiving in your heart. And then he wants you to come and present your request to him, according to Philippians 4 and 6. So that's what I did. Because, you know, I'm just reminding him. The third scripture that I wrote down was Mark 11 and 24. And it says, Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So he basically saying, you need to really, really trust and believe that whatever you're asking me for, you're going to receive it. I am going to perform. I am going to execute. I am going to follow through. I am going to fulfill your request. You have to believe that, right? So I started out with those three scriptures. I felt like that was good to put him in remembrance. And then... After that, I went into my request. Now, one thing I will say about my request is that I also coupled my request with a scripture as well because I want to put a scripture with my request that is speaking specifically about what I'm asking, okay? The other three were just in general about getting my prayers answered. But now I'm going to read to you verbatim what I wrote down and you guys are going to be like, wow, because this is very organized writing um, it's kind of lengthy and it's detailed and that's how you have to be with God. You like that with your job. You like that when you're in, enrolled in school. So why wouldn't you want to be like that with God? So the first one says, we are requesting for a successful sale on 201 Kalinga Lane. We are asking that the sale is seamless, effortless, easy, and a smooth transition. We're asking that there are absolutely no hurdles that we must jump through and no obstacles that we most must overcome. We're requesting that we make a profit of $100,000 on the sale of our current home. This is the amount we want to walk away with after paying off our current home, our home equity loan, and the 2% down payment and all of our credit card debt. And the scripture that I coupled with that was Psalms 84 and 11. And, it, and that scripture says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. So I'm letting him know, like, I'm walking uprightly. I'm not fornicating. I'm not shacking up. I'm not having kids out of wedlock. I ain't gay no more. Really, there's a lot of things that I don't do or do because of God. But I'm just letting him know that I know I'm walking uprightly. And this right here says no good thing does he withhold from who walks uprightly. So I'm, I said what I wanted and now I'm saying you shouldn't withhold this from me because I'm doing what you requested me to do. All right, guys, we have come to the end of this video. It's going to have to be to be continued. There's going to be one more part. There's going to have to be a part three, unfortunately, because this video is so long. So I'm going to go ahead and finish editing this and get it uploaded tonight. And then I will have part three uploaded tomorrow. So do yourself a favor and make sure you're caught up. Talk to you guys later. Bye.